I don't know if you've heard this. There are actually a lot of places in the solar system where we might find life. And among all of them, Europa is maybe one of the most promising ones. Europa is one of Jupiter's moons and it has liquid water oceans hidden under its ice surface. But be careful, this surface is not as thin as you might think. It's actually really thick, something like 20 kilometers thick. One of the possible issues with this kind of surface anyway is that it might have not enough oxygen in order to host life. In fact, usually oxygen tends to accumulate on the surface and we don't know how it could reach the ocean underneath the thick layer. So it could also be that this ocean of liquid water is a potentially habitable ocean, but with no oxygen reaching, that would basically be a waste of potential. Of course, some forms of life could exist living without any oxygen, but it is really unlikely, or better saying, the oxygen presence would give us a better chance to find aliens. So the question is, is there oxygen on Europa? We still don't know and we will need more missions to understand it, but recently some studies suggested that we might have found a reasonable mechanism for the oxygen to reach the liquid ocean. Let's see how. Everything starts on the surface on what scientists call chaotic terrain, and it is called so because basically, it's a mess. Europa's bright icy surface is a landscape unlike anything seen on Earth. To start with, in an overall sense, it's quite smooth with few towering mountains or deep basins. Myriad ridges and grooves crisscross the surface, breaking up the landscape. Many of these features coincide with long, curving streaks that are dark and reddish in color, some stretching across the surface in great arcs over 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers long. Elsewhere, domes, pits, and chaotic jumbles of icy blocks hint that warm ice may be rising from deep below. Hard layers of ice make up the surface of Jupiter's frozen moon Europa. Glacial cracks and ridges scar its frigid white plains, carving paths across an icy shell that conceals a deep ocean of liquid water. Closer inspection of the moon's fractured topography reveals highly disrupted areas, called chaos terrains, where blocks of ice appear to have broken off, drifted, and refrozen to the surface. Searching for an explanation of how these features formed, researchers studying images of Europa taken by NASA's Galileo spacecraft have come up with an answer. As plumes of warm ocean water rise to the subsurface, massive lakes develop inside the moon's crust some larger than North America's Great Lakes combined. Over time, the ice directly above these lakes collapses, splintering into floating geometric fragments that rotate, raft, and resettle into all kinds of chaotic configurations. If such things happen, involving ice motion from the surface to the interior and back, some passages for the oxygen could open from time to time, and we could hope for life on Europa. Temperatures on Europa are really low, but there are some zones where salt concentration is sufficiently high. Some of this water could go through the ice layers, and as it does so, it catches oxygen, bonding with it and bringing it with itself through the ice layers. What physicists did is try to recreate these conditions and see by means of some accurate scientific simulations what is likely to be happening there. The idea has actually been there a long time but scientists never tried to produce accurate physical explanations before. So for the first time, we have what seems to be an accurate model of what is happening on Europa. The team was from the University of Texas, and what they found is that the porosity of the ice changes with the concentration of the water itself, meaning that the more salty the water, the more porous the ice is, the more likely for the oxygen is to reach the ocean. They call it porosity wave. And what really happens is that at the salty water passage, some holes are created. These holes then close once the water has passed. This way, the oxygen trapped in the salty water could reach the ocean. We don't really know if this is what happens for real, but if this is the case, the underneath ocean could host 86% of the oxygen formed on the surface, and this could lead to an ocean sufficiently similar to the oceans on Earth. If you're still here watching this video, it means you are passionately curious about Jupiter and its moons. We constantly strive to make videos that excite a curious person like you, so be sure to subscribe now and press the bell notification. How can we understand if this is all correct? 
we need to send some missions that give us a thermal and maybe chemical map of the ocean surface. One of these is called Europa Clipper. It will probably leave in 2024 on board a Falcon Heavy, and it will pass by Europa for a number of at least 35 times. It will thus get data and send them back to Earth. 35 flybys is a lot. The map we will be able to build with such huge amount of data will be high-resolution maps. However, if Europa Clipper leaves in 2024, we can expect it to reach it by the end of the 20s, and so in the 30s we will have two missions around the iced moon of Jupiter, because there's also another European mission called JUICE that is going to study Ganymede, but first it will pass by Europa. So we can expect JUICE and Clipper to bring some revolution in the field of the iced moons. The Europa Clipper mission is equipped with a sophisticated suite of nine instruments to study Europa's interior and ocean, geology, chemistry, and habitability. The electronic components will be protected from the intense radiation by a 150 kilogram titanium and aluminum shield. The nine science instruments for the orbiter announced in May of 2015 have an estimated total mass of 82 kilograms. The Europa Thermal Emission Imaging System, for example, will provide high spatial resolution as well as multispectral imaging of the surface of Europa in the mid to far infrared banks to help detect geologically active sites and areas, such as potential vents erupting plumes of water into space. The Europa Imaging System is instead a visible spectrum wide and narrow angle camera instrument that will map most of Europa at 50 meter resolution and will provide images of selected surface areas and up to 0.5 meter resolution. Because Europa is bathed in radiation trapped in Jupiter's magnetic field, Europa Clipper's payload and other electronics will be enclosed in a thick walled vault. This strategy of armoring up to go to Jupiter with a radiation vault was developed and successfully used for the first time by NASA's Juno spacecraft. The vault walls made of titanium and aluminum will act as a radiation shield against most of the high-energy atomic particles, dramatically slowing down degradation of the spacecraft's electronics. So to recap, it will probably take a lot of time for us to understand if there is life on Europa, but at least if we found oxygen, this would come up being a really huge discovery, because our chances to find aliens will be finally enhanced. But what if we find that one of these chaotic regions can bring oxygen to the oceans? Scientists are really aware of this possibility, so they are already thinking about the next move, a lander on Europa. If we send a lander on Europa, we could analyze and melt some ice that has been brought up from the ocean to the surface during one of these chaotic events and see if we find some traces of life. We could also think of landing on Europa and dig the ice with the help of some sophisticated instruments. That could open up an underwater way for a small submarine capable of reaching deeper waters. These are not impossible things to do, but we will probably not be lucky enough to see it happening. It is more likely our kids and our grandkids will experience such accomplishments. A lander on the surface of Europa will be, however, a really hard thing to do, because the moon's surface is really different from anything we have seen before. So even if we had all the money we wanted, we could not know how to land safely on the surface. And even if we managed, we have to take into account that Europa is really close to Jupiter and it is quite exposed to radiation coming from the magnetic field of the planet. This will of course challenge our instruments that could respond differently from what we are used to. We would also need batteries since Jupiter is really far away from the Sun, but we wouldn't know how to recharge them. Maybe we could use some plutonium sources, but this is all to be seen. For example, if you want to be an aerospace engineer, you could be having fun getting closer to these problems that can't wait to be solved. Before ending this video, we would like to say another spacecraft that already gave us precious information about Europa was the Galileo Orbiter mission. The Galileo spacecraft and probe arrived in the Jovian system in 1995, completing 34 orbits of Jupiter and its natural satellites before missions end in 2003. The puzzling, fascinating surface of Jupiter's icy moon Europa that looms large in this color view was taken by Galileo. This is the color view of Europa that shows the largest portion of the moon's surface at the highest resolution. To create this version, the images were assembled into a realistic color view of the surface that approximates how Europa would appear to the human eye. 
The scene shows the stunning diversity of Europa's surface geology. Long linear cracks and ridges crisscross the surface, interrupted by regions of disrupted terrain where the surface ice crust has been broken up and refrozen into new patterns. Color variations across the surface are associated with differences in geologic feature type and location. For example, areas that appear blue or white contain relatively pure water ice, while reddish and brownish areas include non-ice components in higher concentrations. The polar regions visible at the left and right of this view are noticeably bluer than the more equatorial latitudes, which look more white. This color variation is thought to be due to differences in ice grain size in the two locations. Thanks, Galileo. Thanks for watching, everyone. What do you guys think about this video? Did you know that Europa could host life? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.